day, graders. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with differentiation, but we've been doing graphs up to this point. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk firstly just a little bit about a point of inflection. And then we're going to move on to optimization. And then when we come back to doing more questions on graphs, I will go through points of inflection again because there will be questions on points of inflection. OK, so what is a point of inflection? A graph has a horizontal point of inflection where the derivative is zero, but the graph continues to increase or decrease after the stationary point. OK, so what do we mean by that? We're used to the fact that if we have f dashed of x equals zero, we're getting the turning points, right? That means the graph is going to do something like that. And this year, the f dashed of x equals naught and over here, f dashed of x equals naught as well, okay? But with a point of inflection, you still have f dashed of x equals naught. But do you notice that here you have a positive gradient and here you've got a negative gradient and there you've got a positive gradient. So here the graph has actually changed from increasing to decreasing to increasing. In other words, the gradient is bigger than naught, smaller than naught and bigger than naught. But with a point of inflection, the gradient after the zero point remains the same. So in other words, here it's increasing and here it's increasing again. So we've got a positive gradient and we've got a positive gradient. So similarly, if we had something that looks like this, oh, now I have to draw it, uh, like that. <laughs> OK, well, that is your horizontal point. Then that would be a decreasing a negative gradient and a negative gradient. Then you can see that that again is your point of inflection. OK, so how do we de determine the point of inflection? It's really easy. All you do is you find the second derivative of a function. OK, and you let it equal naught. That's all it is. OK, you take find the second derivative of a function and you let it equal naught and you will get the where the points of inflection are. So let's say, for example, you have got. Uh, OK, let's just go back up. Oopsie, sorry. And clear this quickly. OK. And erase link. Let's say you've got, I'm just randomly making up an example, f of x equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared uh, minus 6x minus 9. Okay, if I want to find out where the points of the, where the turning points are, I would get f dash of x equals naught, and that would be for my turning points. OK, if I want to find the point of inflation, I have to find the second derivative. In order to find the second derivative, obviously you need to find the first derivative. So f dashed of x would be what? It's going to be 9, 3 times 3 is 9, x squared plus 2 times 2 is 4, x minus 6. So that is the equation for the first derivative, which is the equation of the, for, it's the formula for the gradient. Do you understand that? It's the formula for the gradient. OK, now if I want to find the first to second derivative, I've got to go f double dash of x, OK, second derivative. Now I'm deriving the first derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to find the derivative of it. So I'm just going to change color so that you can understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to go 2 times 9 is 18x plus 4. So if I want to find out where the point of inflection is on this graph, I now let that equal naught. And that's going to give me my point of inflection. So um, let us give you an example. So if we did this, we'd have 18x is equal to minus 4. So x would be minus 4 over 18, which is minus 2 over 9. So that would be the point, the x value of the point of inflection. How would I find the y value? I'd obviously substitute that back into the original, back into the original. Now we're going to do examples of calculus with these points of inflection. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about optimization problems because they are huge. The point of inflection is usually only one or two marks in a whole big multiple choice, I mean a whole big calculus question. Um, 
So let us have a look at that, okay? So let us look at the optimization problems rather because they are a huge part of a question in your um, paper one. Okay, so it says the sum of two positive numbers is 10. One of the numbers is multiplied by the square of the other, okay? If each of the numbers is greater than zero, find the numbers that make this product a maximum. Okay, now the most important thing is don't use different variables. You cannot write, oh, well, the sum of two positive numbers is x plus y equals 10. This is not going to help us because we cannot <laughs> use two variables in the sum, okay? Because then it says one of the numbers is squared by the multiple of the, um, multiplied by the square of the other. That would be x times by y squared or the other way around. That doesn't help us at all. Okay, that doesn't. But if we think about this and we go, well, if we've got two numbers, okay, the one, they add up to 10. So do you agree we can say let the one number be x and the other number be 10 minus x, okay? Then it's okay because then they say, so we've said, okay, examine the problem. We're examining it. Formulate the equations that are required. So our two numbers are x and 10 minus x. That's going to give us our two positive numbers. One of the numbers is multiplied by the square of the other. So it doesn't matter whether we square the x or the 10 minus x, but it obviously be easier if we square the x. So we could go, well, if we say our product is equal to 10 minus x times by x squared. That is our product. It says one of the numbers is multiplied by the square of the other, okay? Then it says find the numbers that make this product the maximum. So let's see, examine the product, problem done, formulate the equations. We're gonna now multiply this out, okay? Because we don't know how to differentiate when we've got brackets. So if we multiply it out, we get 10x squared minus x cubed, okay? Then we want a maximum. Now guys, if you ever see the words max and min, the first thing you do is find the derivative, let it equal naught and solve, okay? If they ask you for max and min, if you don't know what else to do, find the derivative, let it equal naught and solve for x. Okay, and if nothing else, you'll get some marks for that. Even if you have no idea what they're asking about, if they've asked you about cuboids and, I don't know, things that look like ice cream cones and you have no idea what to do. If you get the equation and they ask for maximum, you derive it, you let it equal naught and you solve for x, okay? Okay, <laughs> now, but besides that, let's make sure you can actually do these questions. So now we're going to differentiate, okay? So we're going to have p dashed of x is going to be, how does this work? Two goes to the front, becomes two times 10, which is 20x minus three x squared, okay? And now we wanna find the stationary point. And how do we find the stationary point? We let it equal zero. So for the maximum, for the max, we let p dashed of x equal zero and write that in so that the teacher knows what you're doing. So for the maximum, p dashed of x equals naught, okay? So if that's the case, we've got 20x minus 3x squared is equal to naught. We can take out an x and we're left with 20 minus 3x equals naught. Therefore, x equals naught or 20 minus 3x equals naught. Yeah, I'm right. Sorry, just making sure. So for 3x minus 3x is equal to minus 20. <gasps> Run out of space. I'm going to write over here. So it's going to be x is 20 over 3. And then obviously we need to get that into a proper number. So 20 divided by 3 is equal to 6.67 or 6.7, which is 6 comma 7 
Okay, so that's what the one number is. Okay, now it says, okay, now we've got x equals naught or x equals 6 comma 7. That's what our options were, right? But it says if each number is greater than 0, so that's not an option. So you're left with 6.7. So the one answer is 6.7. The other answer is 10 minus 6.7, which is going to be 3 comma 3. Okay, so then you always go back to the question and read what there are. So it says if the num each number is greater than zero, find the numbers that make this product a maximum. So you can't go along and go, well, I found 6.7, I'm cool. You actually need to go and find both of them. Okay, so that's how you would work through an optimization problem. Let's look at another example. And this, guys, is an old exam paper question. So let's have a look at it. It says a rectangular window is divided so that one part is a square. So that's obviously the square. And that's the rectangle. Okay, the total length of wood available for all the framework is 12 meters. So in other words, all of this, this and that. Okay, let me highlight some. You can see what I'm talking about in case you can't see the arrow. So all the framework, the whole of this, the whole of this, the whole of that, the whole of that, and the whole of this, all has to add up to 12 meters. Okay, do you agree? Now it says, uh, let's go back to pen and let's erase all ink. It says, let and all of that adds up to 12 meters. Okay, let x be the length of the side of the square. So this is x, right? That means that is x and that is x and that is x, okay? It says, let and show that the area of the glass in the window will be a x times by 12 minus 3x over 2 meters squared. Okay. It says a rectangular window is divided so that one part is a square. Okay. The total length of the wood available for the framework is 12 meters. Okay. So do you agree that this bit here is X as well? Okay. Because these are parallel. So therefore this is X, this is X, this is X, this is X, X, this is X. We don't know how much that is and we don't know how much that is. Okay. Let's call them. For the minute, just for the minute, we're going to call them y. I don't like different variables. We can't have different variables, but we need to solve for them. Okay. We are told that all of this, all of this adds up to 12 meters. Do you agree? It's quite a nice question. This. Okay. So do you agree that how many x's do we have? We've got the four, one, two, three, four, five x's. So five x's plus, plus the two y's have to equal to 12 meters. Do you agree? So what do we want to do? We actually want to find these little sides in terms in terms of x. Why do we want to do that? Because they've asked us for the dimension, hang on a minute, They've asked us for the dimension of the glass, the area of the glass, the window. So obviously we need to know that area and we need to know this area here, okay? We need to know that area and that area, okay? So what does that mean? That means we need to find these lengths all together and then we find that area and we find that area. That's all we do when we add them. Okay. And it says prove that it equals this. So we need to do that. So in order to do that, we need to know what this little side is. Do you agree? Okay. So let's do that. So let's go back to pen. Okay. So if we do this and let's go back to black so you can actually see what we're doing. So we've got 2y is going to be 12 minus 5x. So if we do get y is 12 minus 5x all over 2. Okay, let me check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 12 minus 5x over 2. Okay, so that's your y. The y is 12 minus 5x over 2. So let me just write that down. 12 minus 5x over 2. Okay, now, do you agree that the total area, assuming that this wood doesn't take up any space. Do you agree that the total area of this is going to be the whole of this multiplied by the whole of that? Okay. So the whole of this is going to be x plus this. 
So we need to add the 12 minus 5x to the plus to that. Okay, so in other words, the, the, the what should we call them? The horizontal. The horizontal edges, the horizontal edges are going to be x plus 12 minus 5x all over 2. Okay, get it? It's this bit here, this bit here, plus that little word of y there that we've just worked out, okay? Which is going to be the common denominator 2, so that's over 1, so 1 goes into 2, 2 times 2 times x is 2x, plus 12 minus 5x, which becomes 12 minus 3x all over 2. And now if we look over here, we get start getting excited because we see this 12 minus 3x over 2 there, okay? Then it says, okay, but we want the area, but the area is the vertical times the horizontal. The area, therefore, is going to be x times 12 minus 3x over 2 meters squared. Yay, yay, we got that right. Now it says, what dimension of the windows will allow for the maximum area of glass? Okay, what did I say? I said, if you see the words max or min, what do we do? We find F dashed of X, whatever the great, whatever the equation is, would be area, volume, period, time, displacement, distance. I don't care what it is. You will derive and you will let it equal naught and you will solve for X, okay? But now listen, grade 12, there's a little trick here. Even if you couldn't derive this equation, the reason they ask you to show it is because they know it's quite difficult to derive it. They know that students generally get to the optimization questions at the end of the exam paper, and they're not sure how to do it, and it could take them a little bit of time, and they freak out about everything else. Okay, so you might not be able to get this out. That doesn't mean you can't do the next part of the question. So if you look at this and you think, oh my word, I have no idea how to get this. Don't throw away all the marks for this question. Go and do the next part of the question, okay, which says, what dimensions of the window will allow for maximum area? Why? Because you're just going to take this and you're going to rearrange it. You're going to derive it, let it equal naught and solve for x. That's what you're going to do, which you know how to do. So even if you can't get this formula, go and do the next part of the question. Okay, my rant is over. So we're going to go a of x is equal to x times 12 minus 3x over 2. So again, what do we need to do? We need to multiply out this brackets, okay, because we don't know the product rule in grade 12. So let's go. That becomes 12x minus 3x squared all over 2, which we can rewrite as 12 over 2x minus 3 over 2x squared, which again is going to be written as 6x minus 3 over 2x squared. Okay, so now we've got that. That is the actual formula for the area. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is erase all this. So I now have space to write. And now that I've got the actual equation without any funny brackets and squares and things like that, I am now going to derive it. Okay, I'm going to find the derivative. So I am going to change to that. No, I'm not. Change to purple. And I'm going to go a dashed of x is equal to 6 minus 3 over 2 times by 2 to the x, okay, which equals 6 minus, these cancel, 3x. Now, you're right, for maximum, uh, let a dashed of x equal 0. So, 6 minus 3x equals 0. So, minus 3x is equal to minus 6. So, x is equal to 2 x is equal to 2. So it says, what are the dimensions of the window? Well, we know that the one side of the window is going to be 2. We now need to find the other side of the window because I've said, what are the dimensions? So now we need to say, what is the other one? And that side is going to be what? It's going to be 12 minus 3x over 2. Okay. Um, Actually, what dimensions the window will allow for the maximum? Yes, okay, that's fine. So then what we would do is we'd have to say that that is going to be 
12 minus 3 times by 2 over 2, which is going to be 12 minus 6 over 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So this is going to be 3 meters. So the dimensions of the window are going to be 2 meters by 3 meters. Please go back and make sure that you've answered the question. It didn't ask you what X was, it asked you what are the dimensions of the window. And you need to say, well, it's a 2 meter by 3 meter window. Okay. Right, let's look at this question. Now, this question, grade 12s, was in one of the old exam paper questions, and I know for a fact that it flabbergasted a lot of students. They did not know how to do specifically the last bit of it, okay? And it's actually quite doable if you think about it slowly. Unfortunately, in exams, you don't really have time to think about it, which is why we do hundreds of old exam paper questions, because then you become used to seeing different types of questions, and maybe you get to see a question which you've seen some, something similar of, or maybe the identical type question, maybe just in different numbers. So that's why we do all exam paper questions, okay? Now it says, in the diagram above, f of x is equal to x minus x cubed. So that there is f of x. And that is 8 minus x cubed. Okay, I'm going to try and highlight it without actually ruining the thing. So it's this graph there. That day is f of x is my 8 minus x cubed. Okay, now it says d is a point on it such that dp, dp is parallel to OA perpendicular to OA, so it's perpendicular, sorry, and DC is perpendicular to OB. So what are they saying? They're saying that this thing here is a rectangle. Could be a square, but it's definitely got a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle, which means that this side is parallel to that side and this side is parallel to that side. Okay, PX is a point on the X axis, okay? State the coordinates of A and B. They're just asking you to state them, okay? Well, we know that A and B are where this graph cuts the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, so the coordinates of B is really easy. It is going to be 0, 8, okay? Because that's where it cuts the x-axis. Um, f of x equals 8 minus x cubed is a little bit more complicated to just obviously do. So what we can do is we can solve for that by letting y equal naught. So we can say naught is equal to 8 minus x cubed. Therefore, x cubed is equal to 8. Therefore, x is 2. So therefore, this point here is 2 naught. And again, grade 12s, I'd really like to stress to you that it is not, if you wrote and a lot of my students do, and it's very sad. If you wrote A is 2 and B is 8, you will get zero marks because that is not a coordinate. A co coordinate is an x, y point. Okay, you've got to give me an x point, you've got to give me a y point so that I can plot it. That's why it's coordinate. Co means two, coordinates, two of them. Okay, so you need to tell me that B is 0, 8, and you need to tell me that A is 2, 0. Okay, it's very important. Please don't make that mistake. Okay, now, briefly explain why the length of OC is given by 8 minus x cubed. Okay, so let's see what they're saying. They're saying OC is given by 8 minus x cubed. Okay, well, do you agree that this point here, D, is x, f of x? Okay, we know it's x because they've been told that it's perpendicular to this line, which means it's parallel to this, okay? So if this is x, that has to be x. And if that's x and this, y value has to be f of x, which means that it's 8 minus x cubed. Now, similarly, we've been told that this is perpendicular, that dc is perpendicular to the y-axis which means that these two are parallel, okay? Which means that if this here is the y value is 8 minus x cubed, then this y value has to be 8 minus 
x cubed as well. So therefore, this is going to be 0 8 minus x cubed. And it's only because d lies on the equation of f of x equals 8 minus x cubed. If it didn't, then we couldn't tell that. Okay. Now it says, show that the area of the quadrilateral B, O, A, D is given by that. Okay. Sure. Okay, fine. So do you agree that we can break this up into three pieces? We can break it up into, just a second, let me just, okay, right. Um, hang on, first is your eraser and let's erase the yellow. Okay, then do you agree we can break this up into three places? We can break it up into this triangle here. I don't know how to make it so that, that okay, that triangle there. We can break it up into no, mm -mm. this triangle here. Okay, get it. And then we've got the rectangle shape in the. Mm, hang on a minute. Whoopsie. Let's go back. <laughs> we've got the rectangle shape. Okay, fine. In the middle. Okay, so we have three areas that we are trying to find the area of. Okay, do you agree? So now let's look at the first bit. Let's look at the yellow one. So now we're going to do the yellow one. Okay, the top one. So do you agree that that's a triangle? So the area of a triangle equals half the base times the height. Okay. This bit here is, let me just change color so you can see what I'm doing. This bit here we'll call the base. And do you agree that is x long? Because that's x long. So we've got that's a half times by x times by the height. Okay, now how high is that? Do you agree that the y value at this point is 8? And the y value here is 8 minus x cubed. So do you agree that that height can be given as 8 minus 8 minus x cubed? Okay, if this bit is 8 and the, we've just said that the y value, we've just said that the y value of this is 8 minus x cubed, then do you agree that that becomes 8 minus 8 minus x cubed? So that is giving you a half times by x times by 8 minus 8 plus x cubed. So this cancels with that. And you're left with a half times by x times by x to the power of 3, which is a half, and then that's x to the power of 4. Okay, so that's that. Okay, we've got a half times by the base of x times by that. Okay, that's the first area. Okay, half times by, yes, I'm right. 8 minus x cubed, yes, I'm right. Okay, right. next. We now need to look at this area, the rectangle area. So we're going to do the area of the rectangle. So now we're doing, mm, hang on, highlighter. We're doing the area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is given by the base times by the height, right? The area of a rectangle is just base times height. And the base is what? The base is just x. And the height is 8 minus x cubed. Okay. So that becomes 8x minus 8x cubed. I mean, minus... Oh, I hate it when I make mistakes like that. Sorry. <clears throat> 8x minus x to the power of 4. Okay, and then finally, we're looking at the other triangle, the third triangle. Now, if we look at the third triangle, do you agree that the area, again, is a half base times height? Okay, so now what is this? Do you agree that if this is x and that is 2, then we can say that the area is given by half 
2 minus x. That is definitely 2 minus x because that there is x and this is, I mean this here is 2 and that is x, so that difference there is 2 minus x multiplied by the height and again the height is given by 8 minus x cubed. Okay, do you see now why they asked us to do this? It's to give you a clue on how to do this question. And I would guess that this would be the most marks in this paper, in this question. Okay, so if we multiply this out, um, do you agree? Let's multiply out, doesn't really matter, does it? Let's multiply out the brackets first. So you end up with a half, two minus eight is 16. Then it becomes 2 minus x cubed is minus 2x cubed. Then you get minus 8x. And then you become plus x to the 4. Okay, you with me? All right. Now I need to multiply everything by half. So that becomes 8 minus x cubed minus 4x plus a half x to the 4. Okay, so now I need to take all these last things, okay, these last numbers. We need to take this last one here. We need to take this last one here. And we need to take this last one here. And we need to add them up because those are the areas, the three areas, the yellow, the orange, and the green. Okay, so let's do that. But first, we need to erase all of this so that I have space. Okay, grade 12s, again, if I've done something and you haven't understood and it's been a bit fast for you or something, feel free to come and watch a recording of this lesson. The only negative thing about watching a recording is then you can't message me. Um, so please feel free to message me if you, oh, what did I just do? Okay, it's no big deal. Okay, <laughs> I erased the orange color. It's fine, we can work it out again. So then we've got, we've got a half x to the four. Okay, that was this bit, okay? Then we've got plus this bit here, which is eight minus x cubed minus four x plus a half x to the four plus, and this was just eight x minus x to the four. Okay, there we go. So then let's have a look at this. So a half x to the 4 plus a half x to the 4 minus x to the 4 goes away. Cha ching Excellent. There's an 8 all by itself. 8. Okay. This becomes minus 4x plus 8x becomes plus 4x. And then it's minus x cubed is by itself says so minus x cubed. Oh my word, we're brilliant. We just worked that out. Okay, so that is wonderful. We've just proven that the area of the quadrilateral of the yellow plus the orange plus the green gives you this expression. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so now again, I would like to stipulate and um, stress, should I say, that even if you couldn't do this part of the question, this horrible part of the question, you can still do the next part of the question and get marks for it. You can still do that, okay? And how do you do that? It's very easy. They say determine the value of x for which the area of the quadrilateral will be a maximum. This was the area of the quadrilateral, okay? This is the area, a of x, that's the area. Now they want us to determine the value of x for which this will be a maximum. What do we do? We find a dashed of x, we let it equal naught, and we solve for x. That's all we have to do. Okay, every time you say maximum. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to go a dash of x is equal to 8 goes away because it's a constant. So it's 4 minus 3x squared. Okay, what do we have to do? You say 4 maximum let a dash of x equals 0. Okay, just to remind you why this is the case. Okay, the reason we're finding that the derivative to be a maximum is do you remember that if we had a graph, it goes like this, right? And how do we find the turning points? We go f dashed of x equals zero, 
and at this point here, f dashed of x equals zero. So in other words, if I had to take this and convert this into a graph, and then find the derivative, and then find out where it would be, I'd be finding those points. Okay, do you understand that? So what are we really doing? We're finding the turning point. We're finding what the maximum value is. Okay, in other words, what the maximum y value is and what the minimum y value is. That's what we're doing when we're doing this, okay? But now, instead of thinking of it as a graph, we're now thinking of it as area. Okay, but that's how it works out. So, let's carry on. I just wanted to show that to you. Okay, so we do that. And we go back. So, we're going to go 4 minus 3x squared is equal to 0. So, we've got minus 3x squared is equal to negative 4. So we've got x squared is equal to 4 over 3. So x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4 over 3. Okay? But we want an area. So do you really think we're going to have a negative x? Well, actually, we could. Okay. So it says determine the value of x for which the area of the quadrilateral will be a maximum. No, you can't have a negative x because that would mean that we'd have a negative value on the x-axis, which is impossible because we can see it's positive. So therefore, we're just looking for x is the square root of 4 over 3. So then we pop that into our calculator and we go square root of 4 over 3 equals sd and it becomes 1.15. So x is 1,15. So that point there is 1 comma 1, 5. Or if you want to, if you run into one decimal place, it is going to be 1 comma 2. Okay. Zero. Okay. So that is the value of x, which the area of this quadrilateral is e a maximum. Okay. Happy with that. Right. Let's look at the next one. Okay, it says the volume of an open cylinder is 2,197 pi cubic centimeters and then how sweet is it they've given us the equations for the volume and they've given us the equation for the total surface area okay so let's think about this we've got an open cylinder okay, horrible drawing okay Okay, so it's open, right? And it says the volume, the volume is, the volume is 2,197 pi cubic centimeters, okay? We also know that volume is equal to pi r squared h. They've told us it's pi r squared h, okay? They also tell us that the area is pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, okay? They've said the area, the general equation of this is pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. That is the general equation for the area. Now, I want you to have a look at this equation. Let's have a look at it. It says a is equal to pi r squared plus 4394 pi over r. What is missing in this equation that's in that equation? Do you agree that your h is missing? There's a pi r squared, pi r squared, there's two, well, there's pi's and there's r's, but there's no h, okay? So we need to use this form information to solve for h, and then we're gonna substitute that h value into that equation and come up with this thing. Okay, do you understand? So you need to think about these things. You need to see how you're going to go about it, okay? And you got to think about why they gave you this information. So we know that pi r squared h is equal to 2197 pi. That's what they've told us. The volume is pi r squared h, and in this case, the volume is 2197 pi. So I'm immediately going to cancel the pi's. Okay, cool. Now, what are we solving for? We're solving for an h. So h is going to be 2197 over r squared. 2197 over r squared. Excellent. Now, what do we need to do? We now need to find the area. But they've given us the area formula. 
Okay, they've given us the area formula. The area formula is pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And we know that h is equal to this. So we can say that that is pi r squared plus 2 pi r multiplied by 2197 over r squared, okay, which becomes pi r squared plus 2 times 7 is 14, carry 1, 2 9s are 18, that's 9, carry 1, 2 1s are 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 2s are 4, okay, 4, 3, 9, 4, 4, 3, 9, 4, pi r over r squared, so the squared cancels with that, and you're left with pi r squared plus 4, 3, 9, 4, pi over r, hallelujah asked us to work out. There we go. Okay, grade 12s, at this point, I'm now going to love and leave you, and I would like to challenge you to use this to find the value for R, which will be a minimum value, a minimum value. Okay, so please try that. We're going to carry on with this tomorrow, and then tomorrow's Friday, hey? So remember the Friday lessons, maths is at three o'clock. And I want you guys to try it. We're going to do more optimization questions. And then we're going to do some nice, complicated calculus questions from the beginning of everything. Okay, have a great day.